After some questions about the DualShock 4 joysticks, I thought I would do a short video on it. At least it will be a starting point for a replaced joystick that's not working properly. I've only ever replaced the joysticks in the DualShock 4 with other potentiometer based joysticks, but the information should be useful for regular joysticks as well as the newer Hall and TMR joysticks. What I have here is a JDM055 mainboard, so this is a later version of the controller. Now I believe all the joysticks are laid out the same way for all the mainboard versions, but I haven't seen all of them so I'm not 100% certain about that. And that goes especially for the latest made versions, as this one is probably close to 8 years old. This controller has the Favor Union 10K ohm potentiometer joysticks in it. The left joystick has been replaced, but the right one is the original that came in the controller. It does need to be replaced, it's pretty jumpy when touched. Here is the underside of the board. This would be the left joystick here, and the right joystick here. The four pins for each of the joystick switches are here, with these two being the 3.2 volt supply voltage. The left right axis potentiometer pins are here, the 3.2 volt supply voltage goes to these, the center pins are the output voltage for the axis position, and these two are the ground reference pins. The up down axis potentiometer pins are here. These are the 3.2 volt supply pins. Again, the center pins are the output for the axis position, and these two pins are the ground reference. The last four pins on each joystick are the frame mechanical mounting pins, and they also connect to a ground reference. With the standard potentiometer joysticks, the resistance across the ground and power pins should read about 2.5k ohms. The battery and USB need to be disconnected for all the resistance readings. If the reading is much over 3k ohms, there is probably a problem with one of the potentiometers, and if the reading is much lower than 2k ohms, something is probably shorted out, or at least on its way to shorting out. If you have replaced the joysticks with standard potentiometer joysticks, and there is a problem, this is a good first test to make sure they are connected, at least all the power and ground pins. Now if you replace the potentiometer joysticks with Hall or TMR joysticks, which I would recommend if you are going through the trouble of replacing the sticks at all, the readings will be much higher and it will depend on the meter being used and the Hall or TMR sensors themselves. One other resistance test would be to check the 3.2 volt supply pins with the other 3.2 volt pins. They should all be connected together and read very close to 0 ohms. And you can do the same with the ground pins. They are all connected together. Now to check voltages there is a bit more to do than with the DualSense controller. I'm going to remove the USB connector from the bottom part of the case. It's a little dangerous for the flat flex cable to stay attached to the case. There is only one screw holding it in, but some of the plastic pieces have to be removed to access the USB circuit board. I now have the battery connected and I will attach the flex cable to the main board. Now it's ready to power up. I'm connecting to a computer running the GamePad Tester website, but any USB power source should work. If the LED lights up, should be ready to check some voltages. I have the negative lead of the meter connected to one of the joystick frames. It makes for a good ground point. And this is a properly working joystick, so I have my 3.2 volts DC on the power pins of the potentiometers. The center pins should read around half of the 3.2 volts. That is with the joystick in its center position. 1.6 volts is ideal, but 1.4 to 1.8 should work well. It's still well under the 20% tolerance the potentiometers are listed at. To check the joystick switch, put the meter probes on either of the two pins that are not the 3.2 volt supply. It should read very close to 0 volts without the switch being pressed. Then press the joystick switch and see if the voltage goes up to 3.2 volts. If it doesn't and the resistance of this point to ground is greater than 10k ohms, then almost certainly the switch is defective. To check the output voltage of the axis, put the meter probe on the center pin of the axis being checked. With the joystick all the way down for the up down axis or all the way right for the left right axis, the voltage should read close to 3.2 volts. 
with the joystick all the way up for the up down axis or all the way left for the left right axis, the voltage should read close to zero volts. If the voltage is changing on the center pin of the sensor but the axis is not moving, then probably the PCB trace has been damaged. For the DualSense controller, the pinout of the joystick sensors is the same for both sensors. That is not the case with the DualShock 4. Here is the standard favor union potentiometer joystick that goes into a DualShock 4. Of course, for the potentiometers, it doesn't matter which pin is power and which pin is ground, but it does matter for the Hall Effect and the TMR joysticks. So while the potentiometers on this joystick are identical, the Hall or TMR sensors on a joystick made for the DualShock 4 will not be. So this sensor here I will call the switch adjacent sensor. This is the left-right axis in the DualShock 4. The left pin will be the 3.2 volt supply, the right pin will be the ground reference, and the center pin is the output. Now I will call this sensor the switch opposite sensor, as it is on the opposite side of the joystick from the switch. This is the up-down axis in the DualShock 4. The left pin is the ground reference, the right pin is the 3.2 volt supply, and the center pin is the output. This section doesn't have anything to do with tracking down a problem with a messed up joystick. A comment made me wonder if I could detect the ADC sample rate for the joystick sensors. I didn't know if the scope would be sensitive enough to see the sample acquired or even if the type of ADC used would leave a trace of itself. I have channel one of the scopes set to AC input and 100 millivolts of division and I have the probe on one of the potentiometer's center pins. And this is what I got. I have to say I was surprised. I was not expecting a spike of this magnitude to be there. It's around 600 millivolts, so it's very easy for the scope to detect. It occurs every 4 milliseconds, so looks like a sampling rate of 250 samples per second. And it turns out the sampling occurs at the same time for all four axes. Here is the pulse expanded. It's a very fast pulse, less than 500 nanoseconds. Let me see what the rise and fall times are. Those rise and fall times are from the 10% to 90% level. I'm not sure, is that what a sample and hold input would look like if there were almost no input capacitance? Let me try something. I'm going to put a 22 picofarad capacitor across the ground and output pins of the potentiometer and see if there is any difference in the signal. Much harder to keep the ground spring in contact from this direction. I'll use a wooden swab in to push the capacitor into contact. Looks like it makes a big difference. Let me move the trigger level up. Makes a huge difference. Cuts the level by almost two thirds. This 10x scope probe is adding some capacitance, so I don't think there is any capacitor on the input to the ADC in these controllers. I'm a bit surprised at that. Just because the ADC is sampling the value of the joystick 250 times a second doesn't mean it will output a joystick position update 250 times a second. But I think that gives a maximum update rate. And really, every 4 milliseconds is pretty fast. I don't know offhand what the maximum frame rate for the PS4 is, but I would suspect 60 would be about it. I know this is not part of hunting for a joystick problem, but I found it interesting. If you're having DualShock 4 joystick problems, I hope this helped. If you have a question or I overlooked something, leave a comment. Thank you for watching.